Egypt is the mother of our civilizations. The Nile was like the, the main spiritual path that people took to understand who they are. So that's why every civilization uh, in the Middle East went to the Nile to do that process. Hmm. So from the very first human being that walked along the Nile, understanding itself, in every one of our cells, we have the Nile path within. Because every human, the first humans in the world, in order to expand through the world, had to go through the Nile. So there is no one in the world that had no cell with the memory of having taken the path of the Nile. The first human in another in another life, you're saying, like at some point in time, this soul stream essence. All human cells, all human cells that exist today in these eight billion people in the world, for the in order to go to the rest of the world from Africa, they had to walk along the Nile. So in order to go back to the first path that humanity took in order to expand to the outside from the within, they had to touch the Nile. Because when people came from Africa, the only way to cross to the other side was along the Nile. The only way to go to Middle East, to Europe, to Asia, then to Australia, then through Siberia to the Americas, and through the Pacific Ocean to South America, they all had to cross the Nile. Hmm. So, and, hmm. so where did humans first come from? Humans started in Africa. Okay, how did that happen? How did that of, happen? Of, of course, we have been updated. In right, Middle right. We've been genetically <laughs> modified. Is this yeah. okay? Yeah, but the main cells, the main humans, the first actual humans were born in Africa. And from Africa, they started to expand and they started to be modified in Middle East, in Siberia, uh, in the Americas. We have been in encounters, in constant, constant encounters with other species from other places that have modified us, that had downloaded information into us, that had, um, but the main species that created the humans, the first cells, were in Africa. So that's where the, our, our species appear. So and are we, so the base, so there's a, there's a part of the, this human experience that is native. Yeah, there's a so part. Is that it. just sort of the, the cells learning process of like creating the organs and then it just kept expanding and growing and creating a human? Modified. Yeah, and then, and then but naturally. The first thing was naturally in this world, but naturally is, it's very weird to say because um, our design was created from the sixth dimension. So some, sometimes the thing is, when we say aliens created humans, we usually tend to, to think that aliens use the same thing as a human would use to create a species. Like taking a rabbit, <laughs> take into a lab, modify something, make a mix in a vial, in a vial or whatever, and then put a syringe in it and wait for it to transform or open it and change something inside. So that's how humans would do it. But people from other places, right. other dimensions, from other worlds, they don't usually travel from one world to the another. They use interdimensional realities in order to do something. Hmm. So basically, there are many species that never visit this world, but they modify the life in this world through the sixth dimension. Because we're existing on all these planes, right? Like Exactly. And there are some species in other worlds that evolved to be able to, to mold and to use the sixth dimension. And in the sixth dimension, there is no 
new space. So in order to transform the Earth, you don't need a, space, a spaceship to come to Earth. You just, have to, you just have to enter the frequency of Earth and yeah. from where you are, modify the plant and the plant will modify here through layers of time. So for them, it's just a second. But for the, for the Earth, it could take a million years yeah. until the light is modified. So hmm. that's why what we see as evolution is actually a lab work in other planets. You know? um, so why don't they just, why, are, why do we not get modified to the point that we are incapable of evil and destruction and disharmony? Why wouldn't we get modified, modified up? We need a glow up. <laughs> yeah, it's basically it's like saying, for example, um, I want an apple, but I don't want to wait for the tree to grow. So you cannot make an apple. You have to wait for the seed to be in the darkness and the pressure of the earth to feel how to absorb the nutrients and extend roots. And first, the first thing that every being does in the vegetal realm, what is? To go deep into the darkness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because the darkness is the one that has the minerals. The dark is the one that has the potential. And you find the dark and the potential through going against mm. the force of the earth. And you have to feel the pressure until you feel you are tight enough to this reality to start growing up. So when you take the, the understanding of how a plant grows, you will understand why in order to become an aware human being, you first have to go deep into the darkness. Is it true then that kind of like I was saying, if we hold all the information, it's just like system overload. Like we we're not capable of taking the upgrade needed to get to that space. We are doing it. Um, right, right. But like, I mean, in an instant, we're not capable of. If you, if you do it in an instant, that. if if you do it in an instant, uh, there's no experimentation. Without experimentation, there's no integra integra in integration. Yeah. Without integration, there is no transcendence. Hmm. So basically, you are breaking all the laws of time and space in the third dimension. And it doesn't make any sense for the third dimension. So actually, the thinking would be why to even exist. You'd be useless. Back to your original set, you'd be useless. Totally. And there's only one fun thing for an eternal being to do, which is to limit itself. That's the only fun thing to do? <laughs> yeah. It's like, if you are limitless, the only fun thing to do is to put a limit. Yeah, it's like death. Like if you didn't, if you never died, it wouldn't give life much purpose. Exactly. Actually, there is no purpose. So we had to invent the idea of end to have a purpose. So that's why we created the idea of evil to understand light. We have to practice the bad things in order to understand what is harmony. If you don't go through the stage of listening, I don't know, very hard metal music, you won't understand the balance of a high frequency music, for example. Right. And neither of them is fine. Neither of them is the good one. So sure. it's, happening. it's just different frequencies to tune in and to experience. So yeah, the, I mean, again, back to that like medicine journey, it was like, you're just here to experience it. Exactly. So for the universe, actually evil doesn't exist. The, uh, the universe doesn't understand evil. Uh, the universe doesn't understand good. That's, that's just something that we created in order to know how to survive. Evil can kill you. So it's better not to do evil. It's better right. to do good things in order to survive. And doing the right thing and the good thing brought us to create real religions brought us to create culture, brought us to create patterns that we are afraid of breaking. So we are trapped in a system because we are afraid because we have to do the right thing. So what is the right thing? 
you know <laughs> so so that then you start to think oh maybe doing the right thing was not the right thing because we got trapped in our own system so now we have to break it and we are the bad guys because we have to break the system right 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 yeah so so that's why what is bad what is good and basically for the loss of the universe a bad thing actually is when you break the free will of others. And what is the what is the free will of others? The free will of others is basically to allow the other to exist. Uh, to allow the other to exist, basically, when you kill someone or when you um, take the freedom from someone, you're breaking the balance of that someone. For example, for, na for nature, uh, it's not bad to kill when you need energy to eat. That's why all nature does it, because it's something natural. Um, but there is nothing in nature, actually, that, that actually creates slavery, for example. When, when you start to see the actions of evilness um, in nature is when you start to see the dissonance of that reality because actually nature can kill because of a need but cannot kill because of a will so only mind can kill because of a will and uh, when you are when you are becoming aware that you can kill for fun or that you can do chaos taking life of others because of fun then you start living a process of this harmony with the environment, mm -hmm. with nature. Mm -hmm. And that's why a lot of other white cells of the body starts to fight back that cancer. It's like the immunological system, the white cells, and we call it light beams, but actually are white, white cells of the body. So it's the immune system of the body that suddenly runs towards the cancer. And the cancer basically tries to get the cells and and the body tries to survive. And if the body does, doesn't survive, it will, it will give the information of how to do it next time in the next body. If you like this clip and you wanna hear the whole episode, click at the bottom of your screen.